This video is sponsored by Brickwell's Parts and Accessories, helping us to help you to stay on the road, get technical, get down to the details and get it right. Just a little bit of information for you. Reduced service life can be uh, caused by either individually or by a combination of faulty mounting, improper adjustment, insufficient lubrication, contamination, improper or abusive handling, poor housing support, high static misalignment or shaft or housing deflection or poor or inconsistent maintenance practices. Okay, hello, welcome back. I'm uh, officially old. Well, I'm not really, but I'm having to wear reading glasses now. And this is basically because I'm finding it harder to uh, see things on the micrometer and read numbers from bearings. And that's the uh, fact of life. It's cruel. Anyway, in this video, we're going to have to do a little bit of measuring. I will put up a video on how to um, read a micrometer and uh, use a uh, dial gauge for those people who don't understand it. So it will make it easier for you. And of course, um, you remember last week we stripped out the uh, components of the diff. I showed you a few bits and pieces. I just built up on your knowledge base as we go through these videos because uh, I'm actually happy that I find problems. This means I can show you stuff um, and you'll be more aware of it rather than just stripping a diff and putting it back together. So you remember I said that this bearing race, and now bearing races always tell you a story. This has a shiny part here and uh, this is cause for concern. Okay, so what I want to do is show you first of all a resource which is uh, on the internet and you'll find it in good workshops which is the bearing um, damage analysis chart. This one if you download it, it's actually quite big and uh, it's got details, just very simple details of um, what uh, if you have bearing faults or you have certain damage to bearings it will tell you what it is. Now our problem here the shiny part of the race is misalignment and uh, causes of high load, shaft or housing deflection, inaccurate housing or inaccurate fitting. Now, it could be because of this, um, these caps and uh, it's not either been cramped down too tight or it could be the housing's actually uh, misaligned. And uh, we can usually tell with this dial gauge if we have excessive run out, maybe the housing is uh, not right or it's running untrue. Now, it would actually show up on the teeth of the diff. And uh, for you guys that have workshop manuals, I haven't actually told you yet what the maximum run out is on the crown wheel. So um, if you feel like being generous, you could actually tell me whether 0 0.07 of a mil is acceptable for run out or not. Now this cap here might have been cramped down too tight. And you can see the cap there or the adjuster wasn't wound in or it was round, wound in on the piss. I do not know at this point. Um, so here's the bearing. I've cleaned it up. And uh, I'll show you where is it just there. So um, you can see that. That's not running true. Now, when you're expect inspecting bearings, you want to have a look at the whole story um, to see if, for instance, the cage um, is worn or damaged. Now, this is from a different diff, and uh, you can see that there is wear on the, the rollers here. And what the first thing I'll be looking for is roller end wear, okay? And uh, this can be caused by contamination or um, it's got too much end float on the uh, the bearing itself. Now the, we look at the cage to see if it's got any damage as well, uh, which it doesn't seem to have. Now the race again. Okay, I'll just try and get this in focus. This has had fine particle damage. And uh, if you look here, you can see particles have been crushed between the roller and the race, and it's not actually too good, okay. I would say that this bearing needs replacing. You can see it's pitted here. It's also slightly discolored and you can see false brunelling and I'll explain that in a little while. Okay, so there, this is telling us a story and uh, you have to understand bearings, how they work and how the loading is on the, these bearings to, to get a full picture. Now, that doesn't seem too bad. Okay, it's, had, it's been contaminated. And I'd also say that the uh, job of this diff, it actually takes a fair bit of shock 
especially when you first take up drive or uh, if you're pushing it a bit too much. So these bearings get a fairly hard life and they do survive quite well. I presume um, that some of these are like 20 years old. Anyway, I have this on the bearing. This also has uh, signs of misalignment again. And this is um, on the diff that we stripped earlier. So I'm a bit concerned about this. I'm going to have to look into it. The bearing itself doesn't look too bad. It's not too badly worn, not damaged. However, it seems to be uh, showing signs of misalignment even on the rollers, if you can see the shiny parts on the rollers there. Okay, shiny usually indicates there's a lack of lubrication. It should be uh, quite dull. And again, this has uh, um, pitting on it. I don't know if you can quite see that, but you can also see that the uh, bearing cup or bearing race is misaligned. You can see that very, very clearly. Okay, so I don't know what's going on there at the moment. We shall have to investigate further. Okay, so that is the uh, pinion bearing, and this is the uh, pinion nose cone bearing. This is at the, the front, and I'll just have to clean this and see what's going on here. All right, have a look and see. That's running fairly true, and the bearing's all right. Um, it's not badly worn, not pitted. Uh, doesn't seem to be misaligned in any way, and it doesn't have any brunelling on it or brunelling. Um, thing is, with the bearings, also you have the uh, the race here where the rollers run on, and uh, if, for instance, these are damaged, you can usually turn the bearing and uh, feel if it's rough. If it's rough, then the bearing has to be scrapped, OK? So here's a document which will turn you into bearing expert overnight. And to be honest with you, once you've read this, um, you'll understand a lot more about bearing damage and uh, recognising problems. The link's below uh, this video. Now, if you look at excessive end play, on the left hand, scalloping marks in the cup are commonly uh, with excessive end play, and that's uh, brunelling as well, which is shock impacting. And uh, this could be a, certainly um, exposed to uh, high uh, impact loads, okay? Now, uh, not only is that through vibrations, but it's also uh, the operation of the diff, speeding up, slowing down. Now, if you look very slowly, you'll be able to see that it's, it's not scallops, but it has lines in it. If you see that, you see those lines there? It's not the lighting in the studio, it's actually the... Uh, on the bearing race itself so this is um, just something to see it's um, yeah it's had a fairly hard life this diff it survived however this as I say the races tell you a story right then what we need to do is ID the bearings and there are um, not all diffs are the same basically 10 spline may be different to the 24 spline and uh, the uh, Disco 2 as well. Basically, uh, bearings have numbers on them, the race has a number, and so it does the other part of the bearing. We're also gonna have to measure the uh, shims. We'll do that in a little while. And uh, we'll show you with the bearings here. If you don't know, they all have ID markings on them, and it's really important because this denotes the size and the usage of the bearing. In some cases, yeah, they have them on the side here rather than on the ends, so uh, that's just something to note. Now what I do is basically get all the numbers of all the bearings, write them down, and uh, basically you can see this one is HM801346X, okay? And the other part, uh, when we find it, which is Tim King, made in England, HM801310. Okay, so we have the complete bearing numbers. So, happy with that. Write these down, make a note of them, and I'd advise you to always do this when you need to talk to a parts person, uh, Brookwells possibly, which I hope you go and buy from, then you've got the numbers so you can use as reference instead of just part numbers. Right, so the bearing, we've just done the pinion. Um, bearings and these bearings are for the carrier and they'll be both the same the pinions are different okay so this is lm uh, 109 oh sorry 108 949 okay and the race is an lm number um lm 102 910 okay 
I have noticed that some of these bearings don't have complete uh, numbers. They'll only have them on the race, especially the ones that are made in France. So, yeah, basically this is the same number. I do actually check them just to make sure it's consistent. Okay, because you never know, somebody might have just chucked in something that's uh, totally different. Okay, so you can see the number. These bearings are either made in USA, France, or in uh, the UK. And uh, that's really irrelevant, but they're all Timkin bearings. Right, so from Brookwells, we have um, kits. And I'll show you here, set number 47. This is a machine together set. This is RTC 3095G. Those are the bearings for the uh, bearing carrier. Okay, there are two of them. Sometimes the stickers will uh, be covering up the uh, actual uh, bearing information. Not important. Trust Brookwells. Uh, they will give you the right bearings. Okay. Um, now this one has one number on it, which does match to one of ours. And part number for this is, I'll just freeze it here, 5039706G. Now what I'll say is these uh, metric axles, they are rationalized axles. Non-rationalized is the imperial type. Now, so this is one of our pinion bearings and I'll match the numbers with what I have on the table to the main pinion bearing. And so the other one that I have, which is here will be the nose cone bearing okay and the numbers do match again always be uh, very cautious of bearing numbers if you've got the wrong bearing size they won't fit and it'll be a disaster so the part number here for the nose cone one just stop it here it's a 5039707g and obviously i've uh, put the numbers on the screen for you as well okay so this is the 24 spline bearing uh, numbers okay and they all match up happy with that so uh, i've got a full kit of bearings you never ever take about the packets until you are ready you can just about read the numbers um i'm just saying you don't want these to be uh, contaminated at all especially if you suddenly realize uh, that you've got something else to do and you put them in the cupboard or something don't let them collect dust Right then, I uh, like to keep things orderly, uh, not confused, not have everything everywhere. I'm just using all this as a reference also for myself so I don't forget where things are. I do also have two sets of bearings because we're going to rebuild two diffs. And again, these are bought from Brookwells. Um, they're not expensive, but they're not cheap either, but they are worth their weight in gold. You want bearings that work for you. You uh, need Timkin and you need a good supplier of them who knows what they're talking about, okay? So basically, um, if you find that you don't have any uh, part numbers or bearings are gone or whatever, or in this case, um, it doesn't have a bearing number on the bearing, it has one on the cup or the race, okay? Um, you can use this as a reference. You ring Brookwells up and they will supply you the bearings. It's, it's not a problem. Timkin supply bearings all over the place and you'll find that talking to Land Rover dealers, uh, parts dealers is much better because they know what fits to what components. Right, so we're ready to do some measuring and uh, we have some shims here and uh, these are actually really important that we measure these and record the numbers. I've got two sets, two sets of uh, diffs, okay. And first of all, micrometer. I'll uh, show you how to uh, use one in a different video. Always make sure, as always, make sure it's zeroed in because uh, basically you can be off a little bit and it does make a difference. They're only selected shims. They don't come in every single size. But what we want to do is ascertain what the size is. Now, this one is for the pinion height. And I will be explaining this because it's very, very important, okay? We need to know what we've got and what we're dealing with. When we fitted the bearings, we might have to use a different shim. Okay, so I've got that, and I'll just write that down, um, which is 2.85. Okay, 2.85. Um, make a note of that, and I'm well away. And then the other one is uh, the shim for setting the preload. I don't know if you can see that very well, I can't, but that is 2.85 millimetres, okay. Right, so the next one is the preload shim, and you take things to bits, you remember where they are, if not then use a, a microfish um, parts uh, that will show you exactly where it's supposed to be. Right, so preload, 
Okay, now these do come in different sizes. Again, they're selective shims, which means that you will have um, set sizes, so you have to uh, um, play it by ear, as it were. Okay, sometimes I find it hard to read a micrometer, maybe because the light's not right, but I think this one was 3.33 uh, millimeters. Micrometer is not the best, it only goes to um, 0 0.01. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll just scroll them down, 2.85 mil. Okay, and then for the uh, the other shim, I better just actually this is the head head height. Okay, for the pinion, and then for the uh, other part, the other bearing. Okay, uh, to space them apart, 3.33 millimeters, and they do. Uh, and believe me, the the other ones that are sat over there to my right here. I actually have two shims instead of one, okay? So I measure all of these. I know what I've got then, and then we can carry on. I know uh, some of you guys and girls might be allergic to uh, measuring things and being accurate. This, is, uh, along with gearboxes and engines, you do have to be precise and make sure that you know what you're dealing with. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go on like a, an old school lecturer. If you're not interested, then you could bang a diff together and it might work for you, it might not. If you're accurate all the way through, you'll have something that will work for a long time. Just remember, you're spending money on bearings and everything else. You want to make sure you're going to get a good life out of them.